Welcome. Uh, what I want to do is show you the product rule of exponents. And to use the product rule of exponents, um, there's a couple things we want to go over. And also, I want to tell you, kind of prevent you from doing a lot of common traps. So if we look at, I wrote down the product of or the product rule of exponents, which is you know x a any real number raised to the integer m times x raised to a different integer n is going to equal x times n m plus n. So um, let's go ahead and take a look at, let's see why this is going to be true before we actually move on to any examples. Let's just uh, pick some easy problems here. Let's pick, let's say I said 2 squared times 2 cubed. All right? And, you know, we're going to work kind of what the real solutions are down below. So 2 squared, we understand, is going to be 4 times uh, we have 2 cubed is going to equal uh, 8. So if we look at this, when I do 2 squared times 2 cubed, what by using the product rule of exponents, what that represents is 2 um, to 2 plus 3, which equals 2 to the fifth, okay? which equals 32. When I do 4 times 8, I also get 32. Now, I just want to show you just one more example how to show this um, to go through to maybe prove to you why we can use the product rule of exponents. We know that 2 squared is equivalent to 2 times 2, right? Times 2 cubed would then be equivalent to 2 times 2 times 2, right? Well, that's the same thing then as 2 to the what power? 2 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. All right, so that's why our product rules are always going to work for us. Now, let's look at a couple misconceptions before I even get started with the other ones. Uh, a lot of students want to. A lot of students want to go and take a look and they say, "Oh, well, what about if x and y are not the same?" So they say two squared times let's do three cubed, and they say, "You know, it can work the same, and it equals." I don't know, they, they want to uh, multiply these numbers and say that's equal to 6 to the 5th. Well, I don't know what 6 to the 5th power is off the top of my head, but obviously, let's look at um, what this is. 2 squared is going to be 4 times 3 cubed is 27. Now, 4 times 27 is going to be 108. And... I don't know what 6 to the 5th power is, but it's definitely not 108. So make sure that you cannot, the rules of exponents do not work if your two bases are not the same. Now the second thing that also doesn't work is you can't multiply those numbers. So if I had 2 cubed times 2 to the 3rd, or 2 squared times 2 to the cubed, a lot of students want to say, oh, it's 4 to the 5th power. Well, again, I know that 4 to the 5th power does not equal 108. Okay? So it, you got to make sure that, oh, well, of course it doesn't equal 108, but um, 2 squared plus 2 cubed is supposed to equal 32, right? Does not equal 32. And this one does not, it's not supposed to equal 108. So we obviously know that you can't, your, did not, your bases are still going to remain the same. All you're doing is going to add in the exponents, all right? Um, you don't multiply your bases, nor do you multiply the exponents. You just add the exponents as I illustrated here. So let's take a look at a couple problems and uh, work through them. So if I work through x to the fourth times x to the eighth, b times b to the fourth, times b to the sixth, times b to the zero. And then I work on, uh, let's do 3x So let's work on uh, solving these three problems. Well, first of all here, it becomes pretty simple. If you look at it, I have my two exponents, my two bases are exactly the same, so therefore I can use the product rule of exponents. And then all I need to simply do is just add my uh, exponents. So this one is going to be x of 4 plus 8, which is going to equal x to the 12th power. Here, I notice that all my exponents 
are exactly the same. So therefore, I can simply just take my exponents. Now here, I don't know what my exponent is. Well, remember, if b raised to the first power is obviously going to give you b. So therefore, I can substitute in a 1 to help me solve this problem. So now I can do b to the first plus 4 plus 6, and then you can add in 0. But obviously, you know that b to the 0 power, that's not going to affect it, right? By adding 0, that's not going to really change it, So because we know that's going to equal 1. Well, we finalize this by 1 plus 4 plus 6 is going to equal b to the 11th power. And finally, when we, uh, <clears throat> finally, the last thing we need to look at is now we're going to have some coefficients in front of our variables. And that's really not going to change our product, our, uh, product rule of exponents. Still, even though we have these coefficients, we can only touch what we have with our exponents. Now, I'm not sh just showing you an exponent up here, so I'm going to want to put a 1 up there. So now, once I put a 1 up there, I can say, well, since we're multiplying here, my operation to, between my parentheses is multiplication, I need to make sure I multiply my coefficients and I multiply my exponents. So I'll have 3 times negative 2, and then I'll have x to the first times x to the fifth. Well, 3 times negative 2 is a negative 6. And then here I have x to the 1 plus 5, which equals negative 6 raised to the x to the 6th power. All right? So now what I'd like to do is go ahead and write up some problems for you, for you to go and try on your own. And then I'll come back through and I'll, uh, I'll help you out with it. So write down these problems, please, in the black. And then just give yourself a couple seconds um, or a couple of minutes. Try to go and solve them out. And then I'll come back and I'll show you the answers. Okay, here we go again. So what I want to do is let's just go and use our product rule of exponents to solve each one of these problems. So here I have an exponent of 1. So I'm going to write this as y to the 10 plus 1 equals y to the 11. Over here, I'm going to write this as 2 to the 18 plus 10. So therefore, 2 is going to equal 2 to the 28th power. Over here, now, I didn't give you an example of one of these, but what we can say is, remember, I did show you that you can't use your product rule of exponents when your bases are different. So therefore, I'm going to rewrite this multiplication problem with my, with my bases that are the same. So remember, I, can mul I have to multiply my coefficients. So I'll have a negative 20 times 5. I'll have a cubed times a to the first power. I can write that with an exponent of 1 and then b squared times b to the first power. So it's important to make sure that we only use the product property, the product rule of exponents when our bases are the same. Well, here, negative 20 times 5 is a negative 100. a cubed times a to the first is a to the fourth power. b squared times b is going to be b to the third power. Now, finally, here's our last one. Here, it's even more difficult. Let's rearrange them first and then take a look at it. So I have 6 times negative 2, x negative cubed, x cubed, y to negative fifth, y to negative sixth. All right, so again, now we still have to do our addition, right? So I'm actually going to write out this addition so you guys can check my work. Negative 6 times negative 2 is going to be a positive 12 x to the negative 3 plus 3, and y to the negative 5 plus um, negative 6. Well, 12, x to the negative 3 plus 3 is x to the 0, and y to the negative 5th plus negative 6 is going to be y to the negative 11. Now, we learned that x to the 0 equals 1, so that's what we're going to cancel out to a 1. And we don't like to ever write our exponent as a negative. So instead of writing y to the negative 11, we know that we can write that as y over 1 over y to the 11. So therefore, my final answer will be 12 over 
y to 11. And that's how you use the product, product property of exponents to solve given equations or solve expressions. Evaluate expressions. Simplify expressions. That's right.